Duh, right? No, wait, I don't know. I didn't check my voice camera. Are you doing a video? Hello, that's good. I want to be on YouTube. Okay. Um, so we have y equals 2 secant of 3x plus pi divided by 2. There's a couple things I want to make sure that uh, we have when doing a problem like this. First of all, Yusuf. First of all, I need to remember that we can rewrite this as the reciprocal function. All right, and I'm just going to use this as cosine just so I can get an idea. Remember, when we're, when we're graphing the um, reciprocal function, a lot of times it's helpful, or when we're graphing a function, it's a lot of times helpful to use our reciprocal function. And I'm just going to do this just so we can get the idea of what the graph's going to be. Then I'm going to determine what the phase shift and stuff like that. Um, so the first thing is we can always pick the start and the end. All right? So if you remember, one of the first things that we always looked at was, if we were going to look at this, we always look at is period, which was, remember, 2 pi divided by b, right? So we take 2 pi divided by 3, and that's going to be our period. Then, remember, we, never, we needed to do our x scale. Well, the x scale is if your period is 2 pi over 3, your x scale is how far are you going to divide that up into quarters. So what we, took is, what we did is we take our period and divide it by 4. So in this case, we have 2 pi over 3 divided by 4. So then we'll multiply by the reciprocal. And we get 2 pi over 12, which equals pi over 6. All right, that means my critical points are going to be at pi over 6, right? Remember, our critical points were like our max, our min, our x, and our y-intercept. So the next thing is we want to kind of determine our phase shift. We want to determine where we're going to start and where we're going to end, right? Because remember, when we looked at a graph, we had a starting point and an ending point. And that was really, really important when we had um, transformations within the function. So what I'll do is I'll do the start, and I'll do the end. So the start is we set this, what's inside my function, equal to 0. And then we set it equal to 2 pi. Even though I know it's going to be changing, our initial start and end was from 0 to 2 pi. So that's forward where I'm going to set this so I can see what transformations are going to be. All right, and now what we're going to do is just solve for x. So therefore, I have 3x equals negative pi over 2, divide by 3, divide by 3. x equals negative pi over 6. Here, I'll subtract pi halves. So I get 3x. We get 3x. He's not going to. It's OK. I'm just kind of right now at my limits of being able to do something. So we have 3x is going to equal, uh, obviously, pi divided by 1.5 um, is going to be, let's see, that would be 3 pi over 2. OK, then we divide by 3. x equals 3 pi over 6. Yes? All right. So which is going to be 3 pi over 6, which is pi halves. OK. So what we can determine, ladies and gentlemen, is right now we have my graph um, is going over 3 pi over 2, 3 over 6, 1 half. That doesn't seem right. Um, no, but let's see here. That would be over 2, so it would be 4 over 2. Um, that's 3 over 2, divided by 3. Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6. Um, did I do my adding and subtracting? It seems like it should be 1 third. I don't know why I'm getting. No, oh, no. Well, let's just go through it. So therefore, here's my new start. And here's my end. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sketch this graph 
Because for us to be able to determine our phase shift, for us to determine the amplitude and so forth, we need to be able to graph this. So let's go over here and let's sketch a graph. All right. Now remember, it says the graph starts at negative pi over 6. So it doesn't start at 0. It starts at negative pi over 6. And then we said that um, our x scale is pi over 6. So that means my next important point is going to be pi over 6 over, which in this case would be 0. Then I go pi over 6 again. Then I go to the next point, which would be 2 pi over 6. And the next point, which would be 3 pi over 6. Right? And you can keep on going with this. 4 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6. 8 pi over 6. Right? Now, the next thing is we need to remember, actually, let's go back and remember what the parent graph looks like of cosine. Remember, cosine has four important points. 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, it starts at 1, 0. And it goes down to, I'm sorry, 0, 1 and 0, negative 1. So, and then we have our x-intercept. Then it goes down to our minimum. Goes back up. And there. So that's y equals cosine of x. That's what the parent function looks like. Right? Teachers, pardon the interruption. Today is mentoring Monday. Please check your email and send any students involved on the list to the gym at this time. Thank you. OK. So I know we're not graphing cosine. But still, if you guys remember, when we were graphing secant, it was helpful to graph the cosine function first so then we could graph the secant function, right? So when we're looking at this, this is what our graph is going to want to look like, Hunter. But what it's going to do is we need to make sure now we're starting at negative pi over 6. All right? So at negative pi over 6. And then you can see now we also have a transformation of going up 1. So rather than starting at 1 and going down to negative 1, now I need to go up to 2. Do you guys want me to graph the first one? I'll graph it at 1, 1 first, and then we'll do the transformation. So if I just wanted to redraw this, I said it starts at negative 1. So therefore, that's my next important point. Then I go to my next important point. Next important point. Next important point. So that is one period of the cosine graph with our new phase shift, which is going to be shifting left pi over 6. Um, the next thing I need to do is now I need to shift that whole graph up 1. So now you can say that each one of these points are going to be shifted up. All right. So then you graph this. And then what you guys can see is it's just going to keep on following this pattern. All right. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is y equals. Teachers, I apologize. I do need to make a correction. The mentoring students are to go to the cafeteria, not the gym. It's mentoring Monday, Monday as well as the girls' mentoring group. Thank you. Good talk. So um, what you guys want to look at with this is we have the cosine graph, but that's not what we're asked to graph. Remember, we're asked to graph secant. All right. So therefore, if you guys remember, when we had x-intercepts, that was going to be our asymptotes. Well, the x-intercepts would have been at these points. So therefore, I have an x-intercept here. Until we went for the transformations, those are my x-intercepts. and. Then we did the opposite. So once we've now created the asymptotes, we now can eliminate. We can now can eliminate the original graph, Yusuf. And now we're just left with the graph of the secant. Now again, let's go and answer some questions that they have here. So the reason why I wanted to graph it is when looking at this, which was worth that time, it says state the amplitude. Well, we figured out the amplitude. Um, actually, the amplitude, this goes on, uh, on into infinity and to negative infinity, so we're not going to have an amplitude. It says state the period. The period, we said, was 2 pi over 3. It says state the phase shift. How did we move left or right? So remember, we looked at our starting point. And since we shifted 
pi over 6, we can say shift left pi over 6. Then it says find the range. So you look at this graph and you say, all right, for what values of y is this function um, available? Well, you can see that it goes from negative infinity up to 0. And then there's nothing in besides here. And then it continues from 2 to infinity. Does everybody see that? So you could say the range is going to be from negative infinity to 0. Negative infinity to 0. And then you could have from 2 to infinity. Um, and the last thing they asked was, and that's it. That's all they asked. So Jacob, okay, I guess we don't have a thing.